Okay, now let's talk about lists. So lists are data structures. Now these data structures are changeable. We can reorder them, put them in a list, right? So they're just a group of elements. And when you, when you have this list, everything inside that list is called an item. And the best way to think of a list is to think that it lives in between brackets. You're going to see other things later on that look like a list, but it's not really a list because of how it's defined. And how we're going to define lists is because they live in brackets. Just like a string might have quotes around it, a list is going to have these brackets around it. So let's make a new line and let's go ahead and just do something along the lines of lists. And we could just say something like, have brackets like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a list and then we can kind of go from there. So let's define a list of your favorite movies. Now you could put in whatever favorite movies you like in here. And I'm going to put in something like when Harry met Sally, the hangover, the perks of being a wallflower. And this is getting kind of long, so I'm actually going to move this over a little bit for us. And we'll say one more. Let's pick four movies. We'll do The Exorcist. Okay. And now we have this, this list. Again, lists just live in brackets. So we've got list item one, item two, item three, and item four. Okay. So let's go ahead and print these. So if we were to print out something like movies, and we said we wanted to print the first item out of movies, let's go ahead and try to print when Harry bet Sally. So we'll print the first item. So we'll put a bracket around it just like this. We'll print it out and we'll see what happens. So let's save it. And what's it gonna return for us? It's returning the hangover. So item one is not item one as you see it. So when we talk about items and we talk about numerical order here in Python, item one is actually going to be referred to as zero. So make a note here for yourself that this will return the second item. So if we wanted to return just when Harry met Sally, we would actually put in movies zero like this and we could say returns the first item in the list. Okay, and we can save that. And let's go ahead and give it a, a go just to do proof of concept. And there you go. So remember that everything starts with zero and not one. So when you're thinking about things, let's think about them with zero as the beginning number. So let's go ahead and do a few more different prints. What's going to happen when we print out something like this? We'll say movies and we'll do one through three. Do you have a hunch? Let's go ahead and save it. Print it out here. And it will take the list here of starting at one and it'll end before three. So let's say we want to pull a couple items out. The first number that we're going to pull out is going to be the one that we want to start with. And the last number that we're going to pull out is going to be the number where we're going to stop. So the exorcist is three, but if we wanted to actually pull down the exorcist, we would have to pull down four here. So if we want to try to grab more than one thing out of the list, we can absolutely do that. But we have to know where to stop. So now we incorporate the exorcist here. Let's say we wanted to grab everything in a list and we wanted to grab everything after a certain point, right? We could say something like movies one like this, and then we should be able to grab every single thing. And that does pretty much the same thing here. So if we had 30 items here, it would grab all 30 items in this list. If we wanted to grab three items, as we did before, we would do one, and then you would just add three to that to four and it would stop. So a little bit confusing. This takes a little bit to wrap your mind around. But the good thing here is that you take notes, you can make notes however you feel comfortable with. And these tricks should be useful for you. So let's try another thing. What if we said something like movies, and we did this one in reverse, we just did something like this. 
and we did save. Let's print it out. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to print when Harry met Sally because it's going to stop at the one. We never get to one here. Again, similar situation when we have this set to three, we never get to one, we stop at one. So we're gonna grab everything before one, which is going to be just be when Harry met Sally. We could set this to two and we would grab the hangover in this as well. And just to prove concept here, so that I'm not crazy, uh, you could see here the hangover gets added in because we get zero and we grab one. You could also think of this if you don't confuse yourself as grabbing two items out of the list. But make sure you don't confuse yourself because if this number were to be like two through four, then it would be something completely different, right? So you need to make sure that you understand where from the list that you're actually grabbing. I'm just gonna control Z these back. There you go. So from here, let's do two more tricks. Actually, we'll do one more trick and then we'll move into some other items related to lists. So if we say movies like this, and we want to grab the very last item, we can just put in a negative one. And so grab the absolute last item off the list. That way, like if you have a list that's 2000 items long and you don't know where it ends, you could just do negative one and it's gonna grab the last item for you. And then you can see there, it grabs down the exorcist. So cool little tricks, you might, not use these for a while and you probably won't see these come through at least in anything we're going to really do in the course but they're still incredibly useful to know about because they're they are included in the basics of python so if you're going to know the basics of python and you will use these sometime in your lifetime uh, it's useful to know this kind of stuff so we can also do some things with lists as well we can print out the length of our list, so we could say length of movies, something like this, and give that a go. And you can see that there's four items in that list. So we've seen length before with strings and it took every single character inside that string. Here it's taking every single amount of item inside a list and it's printing that out. We could also append items to the list. So we could say something like movies.append and what if we really like Jaws and we added that into our favorite movies. You can't have too many favorite movies, come on. So let's go ahead and try printing that out. And well, we'd have to actually print it, sorry. Movies that append, and then we'd say print movies now. And it should print out with JAWS added in. Where do we think JAWS is gonna actually add itself into? Well, if you said the end of the list, you were correct. So when we append something, we append it to the very end of the list. What if we wanted to delete something from the list? We could say something like this, movies.pop and print movies. Let's see what happens here. And now we got rid of JAWS. So when we append, we append to the end of the list. If we want to delete the very last item in the list, we just use pop. Now, if we wanted to delete something like the first item or the second item, we could do movies.pop and let's say zero. We print movies. This will remove the very, very first item in the list. We should see when Harry met Sally disappear. And there you go. No longer is when Harry met Sally in our list. So this is a quick way that we can remove these items and uh, on the fly if we need to, to get rid of this. So the high level overview here, and the thing that you really need to take away is that lists have brackets. We're gonna see something called dictionaries later. We might see something called tuples later, and they all look very, very similar. But here, lists have brackets. Inside those brackets are what we have that are called items, okay? And there are many different ways to return items. The reason that I'm showing you these different ways is so that you can get familiar with the syntax that we start our list or our items with zero and not one, and that we can grab from these lists in different ways, okay? And this will come back into play later uh, with how we can utilize the same kind of syntax with other items as well or other things in Python. So we can also utilize you know, printing out length or we can do a dot append and add to the list or a dot pop. And there's a lot of different things we can do here 
uh, to, you know, to append to these lists or remove from these lists, etc. So this is just the basics, but hopefully what you take away from this is that lists have brackets and, you know, the items, there are items in a list and they start with zero. Those are the key takeaways. So in the next video, we're going to briefly talk about tuples and then we're going to move on into looping. So let's go ahead and do that.